That makes us lose trust in you and therefore we get out of our feminine. Hello and welcome to the Feminine as Fuck podcast. I'm your host, Monica Yates, a period and ICF certified women's life coach, and I help women to harness the power of their period and connect to their feminine flow. In these episodes, we will be talking about all things periods, hormones, confidence, health, food, money, sex, business, feminine flow, your brain, energy, and all the stuff that goes through our heads. You will walk away from each episode with new chicken nuggets and truth bombs, as I don't have a filter and I love talking about all the shit that people are thinking but too afraid to say. Oh man, guys, it's fucking good to be back. I just, I'm feeling so many fucking vibes today. I mean, obviously this comes out a little bit later than when I recorded it, but it was snowing yesterday and today has been like an incredible day and I just want to like spread the fucking love with you ladies and men um, and men and men and men and men. I fucking love all the men that listen to me. And if you are a man that's listening to me, firstly, thank you very fucking much. Secondly, can you please share me with your friends? Like, I don't even care if you have to say, I listen to this like dumb chick and she talks about random shit. Like, I don't care what you have to say, but like, let's just spread the delight of the masculine energy and of the masculine understanding of feminine, right? Let's just fucking do it. So today's episode is actually for you guys. It's for the men. Um, Hence, I want you to share it. So it's for the men. And I actually have no plan on where this is going to go. I've written the title and that is it. I have no plan on where it's going to go, but super cacao, hold on. I do want you guys to just understand a few things about being in your masculine and why it's so much more than just like being a man. It's not actually, that's like not what it's about. It's something way greater than that. It's, it is like the portal for allowing a woman to go deeper into her feminine. So you know how you think that it is like the bee's fucking knees and the sexiest thing on the planet when, when a woman, like even just me thinking about it, it's like, oh my God, when a woman like fully surrenders and gives herself to you, are you like, are you hard right now? Cause I would be, if I were you, if a man was like in front of you right now with all his masculine energy, I'd be fucking wet. So <laughs> this thing is not filtered. <laughs> I, <coughs> oh, Jesus Christ, I need you guys to sink into the beauty of the feminine. Okay. This is what's really important for understanding this podcast episode is that you have to stay in the energy of feminine is beautiful. Okay. Which I know you guys are already in because you listen to my podcast. So obviously. Okay. So rule 101. If you think that your woman is going to be in the same fucking mood all the time, she's not. So just like scrap that idea. As the feminine, we are everything, right? We are the sun, we are the rainbows, and we are the fucking thunderstorms and the tsunami. So when a man says to a woman, like, why are you so moody all the time? Do you know what this does? You lose your trust. Sorry, as women, we lose our trust for you because you have betrayed us emotionally in that moment. And you have in, maybe you don't mean this, but you have in that, in that scenario told us that our pure essence of feminine energy and of being fully expressed is like annoying you and that you can't handle it. So if as a masculine man, if you are portraying the image that you can't handle a feminine woman, then don't expect a woman to be feminine. It's kind of like if I was sitting here and like, all like, yeah, I want like some masculine man, but I also wouldn't let a man like open the door for me. It's like, I'm being a fucking hypocrite. So really catch yourself of like, are you saying you want like a woman to like surrender more and like, let me be the man and let me take control. That's a classic one. I'm like, I want to be able to take, take control. I want to be able to do X, Y, and Z for you. Um, but at the same time, you're getting annoyed about the feminine. And you got to remember that like whatever you're getting annoyed about the feminine with is a reflection of your feminine energy inside of you. So if you get annoyed of like the feminine's um, desire for like, let's say like beautiful, like aesthetically pleasing things, like what do you get annoyed about within yourself? Maybe do you get annoyed at like your gut feelings um, or your desire to sometimes be creative or sometimes be really expressive? Like that's all feminine energy, right? So whatever you're annoyed with with her about, it's also about you and it's about your mum as well. Because when you're growing up, guys, your mum is a depiction of the feminine and your dad's a depiction of of the masculine. This also means though, that if you didn't have a really healthy 
um, example of the masculine when you were growing up where he did waver, then you will do the same thing, right? Where you will waver. So an example of this is like, if your dad was like there one minute and then not there the next, like that's a wavering masculine energy where he's here sometimes and not here the other time. So for a woman that makes us lose trust in the masculine energy, right? Nothing against our dads. My dad worked a lot as well. I fucking love him to bits of course, but like we perceive things randomly when we're, when we're kids, right? We just like, we're a bit dumb in that way. So we don't have an adult understanding, right? Anyway. And so, um, so if you've had a wavering masculine energy, you'll likely do the same. But if your masculine energy is wavering where one minute we feel like you can trust, we can trust you. And the next minute we feel like we can't trust you. Like that is going to cause a gap in your relationship with women. Okay, a gap in your relationship with women. So it is your, um, you know, the invitation is here. Fuck this, I'm not going to use funny wording to you. Your job is what I'm saying. Your fucking job is to hold down the fort, is to take control, right? Is to show her and prove to her that no matter what, you are there for her 100%. If you are not there for her, whether it's physically or emotionally, and I want to put a side note to this. One of my clients actually asked me, like, you know, how can I manage my long distance relationship? And I said to him, you can be physically separated and emotionally you can be together. So if you emotionally are wavering all the time with her and you're emotionally abandoning her in in moments, don't expect her to then fully trust you and surrender when you guys are being intimate. Like it's not going to fucking happen because you've lost the trust. And in order for a feminine woman to surrender deeply in, and you can change this if you're in a same sex relationship, um, in order for a feminine woman to all the feminine in a relationship to surrender very deeply so that you can like give to her and like penetrate her emotionally and physically, there needs to be so much safety. Now that does not mean that you need to like tell her in the middle of fucking sex, like you're safe, beautiful. I'd be like, Oh my God, what the hell are you on? Like, that's not what we're talking about. Right. And actually let me go into this note. Actually, let me go into this. So mm. I'm going to lose my track of thought. Okay, hold on. This And this is a feminine energy, right? You guys might be getting annoyed. Like Monica just jumps everywhere, but that's the feminine, right? Like the masculine is like a plan and the feminine is like, let's just flow with it. So I like to just flow with things, right? So if you expect her to surrender, don't unless you're giving a very, very safe environment where there is no question in her mind of can I trust him? And this is really important because for a lot of women, they have lost Uh, lost trust in the masculine, whether it's from their dad, whether it's from ex-boyfriends or whether it's just like society and how society has lost trust in the masculine as well because of toxic masculinity. Okay. Um, so what I was also going to say was fuck, I know I've lost it. Oh my God. Why does this happen to me? Okay. I'm back. So I get it. I got got it. I found it. Okay. So fuck, I've lost it. No, I found it. Okay. Oh my God. What the fuck? Um, so what I was going to say was that don't think that women want you to ask them, how's your heart chakra today? Like I've asked a lot of women this, this question, this, this question, men, and I've said to them, do you want a man that says like, how's your heart chakra, babe? And they're like, no, I'm like, okay, do you want a man that just listens to you and doesn't operate from his ego? And they're like, yes, that's exactly what I want. I mean, that's what I want. I mean, whilst I'm all into like, heart chakras and whatnot. If I'm asking my friend, like, how's your heart chakra? I'm like kind of doing it as a joke. I'm like taking the piss out of that. I don't actually fucking mean like, how's your heart chakra? It's not like a big serious question. Like I do actually care, but I'm not literally giving me like, please tell me the vibration of your heart chakra. That's not actually how I talk. As you guys would be well fucking aware. Anyway, so don't fall into the trap of thinking like, oh, I have to be some conscious man now in order and like be all like woo woo and like into fucking crystals in order for her to like trust me and and be in love with me. And that's not the case. The case is that you actually have to listen, li fucking sin. So don't cut her off. Don't listen with your head. Listen with your body. Okay. So, and so like, let me explain this to you, like with an example. So, you know, when like you've had an afternoon nap in the holidays and you wake up and you feel like a freshly newborn baby and you're all warm and your like cheeks are all red and it's so cute. And you're like, Oh, I feel so fucking good right now. And you just feel really cozy and it feels different to when you wake up in the morning. Okay. 
that is how, like that energy of like how you would talk when you just woken up from a nap, that is how you need to listen. That's how your body, your body needs to feel when your woman is like, Hey, I really like to share something with you, or I'd actually really like to talk to you. A lot of personal development, um, like podcasts or books or like programs, they'll say like, they'll, they'll, they'll be into their fucking woo woo. And they'll say like, you know, what you want to say to them is like, Hey, I'd really like to share something with you. Or I'd really like to, um, you know, sit down and have an open communication conversation. And I'm like, what are these fucking wanky words? You don't need to say that. You could say like, like your woman could say to you, or you could say to your woman, like, Hey, I'd love to grab you for a second so we can have a chat. And you don't, and obviously the words we can have a chat freak people out. So don't say, so we can have a chat five hours before the event, say it in the fucking moment if you want to. But if you want to say to her, like, if you want her time that evening and you want to text her in the morning, then just say like, Hey, do you want to come over tonight? Like you don't have to say we're going to have a fucking talk, but it's really important that when you, when she's wanting to talk to you about something, she's sharing vulnerabilities. So I know that for you men, when you guys are sharing like your passion and your work and whatever, that's you being vulnerable and open. Yes, I get that. But for women, when we're expressing, when we're not happy, that is a deep level of vulnerability that we're sharing because we have an inconvenience wound that is wound into society of like, I, I like that. That's why women like people please a lot and we're afraid of rejection and we're afraid of saying the wrong thing or offending somebody because we don't want to be an inconvenience. We don't want to be the reason why you got angry or why we broke up or whatever the thing is. So we will tend to bite our tongue in order to keep the fucking peace. Right. And I feel like this is a massive wound in women as well of like keeping the peace so we don't piss the man off because of like this need for like this neediness, like this neediness that we have, for like a toxic scenario. And as just an FYI, people will throw around the word like, you know, don't be codependent. Well, according to attachment styles, everybody is codependent because when we're fucking born, we are dependent on our parents. Like we cannot survive without love from our parents. So, don't think like I can't depend on her or she can't depend on me. That she absolutely can fucking depend on you and you absolutely can fucking depend on her. So really just like check in with yourself, guys. Like, are you being that sturdy fucking tree that your woman needs or are you wavering? Because if you want her to open up more and really open her heart, and I know that you love when a woman is so open and it's so fucking hot and sexy, but you need to create the container for that. And this is, oh, this is an important thing actually that's just come through. So like, think of it like, what would be like a good like analogy? I don't know. Okay. So that was fucking good. Hey, so I want you to think of like, oh, actually I know. Okay. Think of a bath. You are the bath, not the water in the bath, but the actual like ceramic or something like the bath, whatever it is. You guys know the fucking material better than I do. You are that bath, right? The container for the water. Then the feminine is the water and maybe like a little ducky floating around. Okay. Maybe some rose petals too. So in order for the water, aka the feminine, to be fluid and flowing and free and warm and delicious and inviting, she needs a safe masculine structure and, and, and container. And that's why for a lot of women that actually feel out of control, they are really in their masculine energy because it's like a facade of like, well, no one's creating a safe container for me. So I have to create it for myself. They do it from this like wounded protective of self way where they block people from coming in. They actually close their heart off. Whereas a truly divine feminine woman knows that the universe has her back and knows that the men in her life have her back. And therefore she feels free and safe to fully open her heart to the divine masculine, AKA you. So if you want your woman to really open up deeper, you need to make sure that you are creating and maintaining a very safe container for her to flow in the container of like she's inside the container and she's flowing around and you're like the, the edge of the container. So this means, for example, letting her know when you're coming home, this means going to work, having a passion, having a purpose, like nothing is hotter, like nothing is hotter than a man that is full of drive and passion and purpose. And that's why it turns so many fucking women on when like their men or that their man 
or men are doing the work. So when I say doing the work, I mean they have a coach or they're going to the event or they're listening to podcasts or they're reading a book, but not just listening to the podcast, but actually then embodying the stuff afterwards or they're meditating or they're going to men's circles. Like all of those things are the hottest things for us to see in men because it shows how strong and how protective you are and that we can fully trust you because you are always elevating yourself. But if you are always in your ego and if you're always acting out your inner child wounds and always being triggered and shutting down, that makes us lose trust in you. And therefore we get out of our feminine because it, it, we don't deem it safe to be in our feminine. Like in order for a woman to be fully in her feminine, there needs to be a lot of safety. And that's even why, for example, I really love staying in familiar cities, familiar, um, like I'll stay in a hotel if I can, those sorts of things. If it's like financially okay when it's a long period of time, like right now, because I'm living, I'm living in a hotel right now, but it's, it was financially like it was the same amount of money basically as staying in an apartment. So whatever, I just was like, okay, I want to do this. And why? Because I feel that I can surrender here because I've got a front desk, a whole team of people that obviously looks after the hotel, X, Y, and Z. And so I'm actually allowed to like fully let my hair down and fully surrender and fully flow. And that is such a gift that I've actually given myself to allow me to be in that feminine state kind of like all the time. Um, so that's actually the role of you to be that really sturdy structure for her and don't waver when she's turning into a thunderstorm. The ultimate test and women test We test because it's like, are you strong enough for us? Okay, because ultimately we need a man that is protective and strong and will do anything in the world to protect us. And he does not, he's not going to, he's not going to like freak out when things get tough. And so we can really trust ourselves, trust um, him and open ourselves up to him. So like an amazing test is like, can you say is that strong fucking sturdy tree? Like it's locked into the ground when she's having a thunderstorm fit. Or are you going to waver and are you going to like put it back on her and are you going to shame her and judge her for it, whether it's subconsciously or consciously? And if you're doing that, we can fucking sense that. Like our intuition can sense what your subconscious is saying. So if your subconscious is like, oh, here she fucking goes again, we can fucking feel that, guys. Like we can feel that. We are so much smarter than you think we are. Like our intuition is ragingly strong, especially if your woman is into this work. Um, like it is strong. Like we can fucking sense when you are getting pissed at us for like having an emotional day or for, you know, sharing with you of like, please, why haven't you done the dishes? Like, for example, a really small thing of like, you know, us wanting you to do the dishes. It's not because us wanting you to do the dishes isn't because we can't do them ourselves. And it's not because we're like, we want to punish you, right? Like maybe your mom, mom was like, do the dishes because you've been a naughty boy. That's not why we're getting you to do the dishes. We're wanting you to do the dishes because it allows us to surrender into our feminine and you to look after us. Like maybe we've made dinner, right? One, cleaning up is like the worst thing in the world, okay, for majority of us. It's like taking out the trash or the garbage, whatever you want to call it. It is the most grotesque job in the world for a woman. But I know for a man, you're like, it's just the rubbish, like no big deal. But for us, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? I will do anything to not take out the rubbish. Like, it's fucking foul. Like, it's just no. Like, fuck, like, no. Even pulling the rubbish out of the bin is, like, beyond fathomable. Have you ever noticed, like, your woman will, like, stuff the garbage bin so heavily before she pulls it out? It's because we don't want to pull it out of the bin. Um, So, like, you then taking the rubbish out, cleaning the dishes, it's a sign to us that you are there to provide for us and that you are going to, like, treat us really, really well. And by us then seeing that, we can then trust you further in your protection of us and the way that you provide for us, but also the way that you notice our needs and you meet our needs. And because you meet our needs, even over these tiny, minute things, we can then love you deeper, love you stronger, open more and surrender more. So we'll actually improve the relationship. Okay. Another thing is that your word is your honor, as my mom would say. So sorry. So when you say something to a woman, like I'll make dinner, or if she says to you, okay, this is a little example. If she says to you, can you make dinner? 
She doesn't mean for you to be like, yeah, I can make dinner, but like, I'm not, I don't want to. Like, that's not what we're asking you. We're asking, will you make dinner? So I know for you guys, if we say, can you make dinner versus would you make dinner? The yes that you say to eat both of those things actually mean two very different things. Like, can you? Yeah, I can, but like, I don't want to. And then would you? It's like, yes, I would. And I made a promise to you, so now I'm going to fulfill it. Now for women, they mean like, can and would mean the exact same thing. Like, can you and would you? Like, same fucking thing. You said yes. Why isn't dinner made? It's the same thing. So when you um, say to a woman, so like, yes, I'll make you dinner, your word is your honor. And every time that you don't stick to your word or you use an excuse for not fulfilling what you said you would fulfill to her, your core becomes like weakened. Like your, your depth and your presence for her becomes weakened. And therefore we, as a woman, lose trust, all the feminine, lose trust and even sexual polarity with him because in order for us to have sexual polarity, we need to be in our feminine, okay? And even though you might be putting a lot of work into, you know, your job and everything else and you're like, oh my God, I can't juggle everything. It's not about that. We, we don't factor in everything that you factor in. So I know that you guys can look to everything logically and be like, I'm going to work. I come home. I do this. Like, I don't have time to make dinner. But if you've said yes to something, you have to honor that or at least share with us, hey, babe, I know that I said I would make you dinner and I am deeply apologetic, but I cannot make dinner. Can I order something for us instead? Make that make that shit healthy though. Um, can I pick something up easy from the supermarket? Can I help you in any way? Or can I make dinner on the weekend for you? Like something else like that, right? Like support her so at least she knows like, okay, he's apologetic and he's really showing me that he is not just saying it and like just fucking off and doing something else. Like he's really, really showing it. Okay. So your participation in your words, in the, in your helping of like housework, cleaning, doing the dishes, taking out the garbage, it means so much to a woman. Like it means so much because again, it's that, it's that supporting, it's that supporting, it's that providing, it's that it allows us to feel like, oh, I'm not the mum in the relationship. I am the girlfriend, the lover. I am fully supported and he's doing things for me and supporting our relationship. Because often what can happen is that women feel like they're the ones supporting their the relationship and him. And that's not cool, right? You want to support the relationship and her and she wants to also support the relationship and her. Okay? So making sure that your, your word is your honor and that you're really sticking to what you've actually said is really, really important. Okay. And don't get lost in the details of whatever you fucking have going on in your day, because the ultimate thing for a woman is no, no, no. The only, the only thing that matters to her is you said this and now you're not doing it. You've let me down. I lose trust and I lose faith in you. That is what happens in our head as a woman. So your communication is crucial to prevent that from happening, okay? The next thing is that if you think that your woman is going to get easier as things go by or that it's going to be easier to live with her or she'll get less emotional, you're in for a treat. You're in for a fucking treat. The reason why is we as women will test your capacity to remain in your truth and purpose, to us, to your job, to your career, to your friends, everything. We test your depth of love to allow us to make sure that we can actually trust you, okay? And this can come in the form of you doubting him, you distracting him, you challenging him, you setting him up with like little tricks and your ego would be like, fuck you. Like, why are you fucking testing me? Like, that's so toxic. Mm, No, it's actually not. We do it either subconsciously or consciously, but if, if a conscious woman, if a woman that's into this work sets up a little test for you, she's not doing it because she wants you to fail. She's doing it for her own good to see, can I give myself fully to him? Can I have his babies if she wants babies? Can I marry him if she wants to get married? Like, can I devote myself to him? And if he doesn't pass these little tests, that's, that's her sign to herself of like, he's not and like, he's not enough for me. And that doesn't mean that you aren't enough as a man, or that doesn't mean that you're a bad man or you're not good enough or you're worthless. That's not what this means. It means for her, 
you are not the right match. Okay. So for example, some women really need a man that is home a lot. Okay. That is like very active with the kids and maybe, um, doesn't work too much. Like has a pretty, like that he's always really, really present whenever he's home. Okay. For me, I want a man that's present when he's home, but like if he works a lot, like I'm not fussed by that because I work a lot. So that's not as important to me, right? But what would be really important to me is that um, he honors my feminine energy and never, ever, um, like on purpose, never, ever criticizes me being in my feminine, like in terms of the wildness, the self-expression, all that sort of stuff. Like I need to be able to be fully expressed and fully myself. Okay. So little test along the way could be, you know, me crazy dancing at home and is he going to react? And that'll be a little test. And these little tests will allow me to kind of depict like, is he the right man for me or are we not a good match? Because a woman knows what she needs in a relationship. And you know, men, you should also know what you guys need in a relationship as well. So these needs aren't like, what do I want? Like, I want a man that's this and this like greed. No, no, no. This is what I need in order to be happy. So I need a man that makes me laugh. I need a man that doesn't drink when I'm not drinking. Like, I don't want a man that like drinks every night when we're having dinner. Like you can go out and get drunk with your friends. I do not give a shit, but I don't want you having to be able to, I don't want to be, have a bottle cracked open every night. Like that's not my vibe. Um, I need a man that knows how to cook. Like those little things I know from my previous relationships that when I don't have them, I actually really miss them and they mean a lot to me. So I've, I've allocated my little list of things that I need. like open communication is really, really important to me. Like so important, like a guy that's not stuck in his ego. So you knowing your needs in a relationship and her know, and her knowing her needs are really, really, really important. Now you unfortunately don't get to test her because we can see straight fucking through it. And we don't like that. Okay. But we will test you. And while some of you might go, that's so fucking unfair. It's not unfair because you guys have this thing called resourcefulness. So you know, whether you know this subconsciously or consciously, you know that you will not waste your resources on somebody that you have no interest in. So you'll know after a few dates, like, do I want to text this woman? Do I want to plan a date? Like, that time and effort that goes into planning a date or texting somebody or thinking about someone, that that takes a lot of resources, right? And I know that you guys are not going to fucking be thinking about that woman if she's not the one for you or if she's not at least worth a shot. And so then you'll end it or you'll ghost her or like you'll do something to like end that because you're like, nah, I don't really want to spend my resources on her. Cool. That's kind of your way of like filtering it out. And our way can often be tests of like, mm, no, I don't want, I, he's not, he's not meeting the match. He's not, he's not up to the, he's not, he's not up to the game. He's not whatever. That's kind of our way. So we all have our own ways. So we are, we are equal in that we have both been given the tools to navigate the opposite sex. But what's really important is that you are also open to learning from women. So oh, this is really important. Um, women are complicated creatures Yes, I would say men that are simple and women are complicated. Um, and I think women think that men are complicated sometimes because we're so stuck in our complications that we don't realize how simple they are and how easy men can be. What this means is that if you are not actively searching for resources of how to understand women, you are doing yourself a disfavor. That's the truth. Because your life will get a lot fucking better and your relationships will progress a lot faster and deeper if you can listen to these podcasts more and whatnot and really understand women's brains because we are so different to you guys and that's why I love coaching men because they'll say something to me and I'm like oh no no you did not say that and not in like a condescending like you're a terrible person for saying that I'm I love men you guys know that that I'm like give it to me and I will like reword for you there is zero judgment in my coaching containers, but it's very interesting how, you know, men really, really, really need to take that time to look more into women. And one of the best things that I actually want to share with you guys to finish off this episode is chivalry. Women that don't want chivalry are not in their feminine. That's the truth. And women that are in their feminine want fucking chivalry. Like I will accept a man opening a door for me, whether he is 75 or 15 or hot and, you know, 30. 
So I am now, because I'm so in my divine feminine, I'm so grateful to the masculine and so like loving towards the masculine that I really receive from the masculine, but I used to not receive from the masculine. So chivalry is actually a really great way for you guys to filter out. Is this woman in the divine feminine or is she quite in her masculine? If you want a a woman in her feminine. Um, so chivalry, you know, examples of like buying her flowers and like opening the door for her and X, Y, and Z, these things are not dead. Like, I feel like some people think they're dead. These things are not dead. It is not just me that wants these things. A woman that is in her divine feminine will so greatly receive these acts of service, like beyond a fucking doubt. If you give a woman a bunch of flowers and she's like, oh, thanks, and like kind of doesn't really receive it, then you know she doesn't know how to receive properly. That doesn't mean that you can't date her. That means you need to just know that you really need to lead her into her divine feminine, which we can talk about in another episode. But like even some of the things from today, of the more that you're in that sturdy tree, the greater her ability to open to the divine masculine. So your that can also be like your little test way of knowing whether a woman is in her feminine or not is actually through the act of chivalry okay so obviously I know some of you are gonna go but like what's the line these days because obviously like there's so many like mixed messages and like fear of like you know doing chivalry and that it's been taken the wrong way okay some little examples of chivalry that I believe cannot go wrong opening the door for a woman and if a woman goes ballistic at you of like, what do you think I'm fucking weak? That is so her problem, not yours. Like so her fucking problem. Uh giving a jacket to a woman. And like also I want to say like like any human sh- should open a door for any fucking human. Like let's just have human decency, right? And then also um like giving if you, if it's freezing cold outside, for example, and you're on a date with a woman, give her your coat. If you're like on a business meeting and you're going for a walk outside, you don't need to give a woman your coat. If you can see that she's freezing you could say like, "Hey, I hope this isn't. I I don't intend this to be inappropriate. Um, do you want my coat? I can see that you're freezing." And if she receives it, great. Like if I was in a business meeting and a man did that and I was freezing, I would happily fucking receive it. But also there is a time and a place. But you can just say to her, like, just so you know, I don't like, please don't take this as an inappropriate gesture. I'm just wondering, do you want my coat? Like you can very clearly state that to her. Like this is not to be taken in in, in an inappropriate way. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, but if you're on a date, give her your coat if it's cold outside. Like if you're on a date, pay for your fucking meals. Like these little, little things, a woman that's in her feminine will, and she might hiccup at first. She might be like, Oh, but then she'll catch herself because she's doing the work and she will go back into feminine. Like, thank you. Thank you for paying the bill for me or the check. Um, another example is like picking her up. Even if like, if you're going out on a date, and you are like, I'll swing by your place and pick you up. Or even if you're like getting an Uber into like the city or whatever, wherever you're going for your date, just say like, I'll swing by with my Uber and I'll pick you up. Like, oh my God, if a man did that for me, I'd be like, uh, yes, you fucking will. And I probably won't be wearing any fucking panties. <laughs> like that seriously, like that is such a heart opening thing, you know, to receive that. Um, another example could be, um, just like little things like sending a little message of like, Hey, hope you have an amazing day with a little emoji or like have a good sleep. Like those little things are like, I'm thinking of you. They go a long, long, long way. And you don't need to become anxious and bombard her with messages. Uh, that, that is a turn off, right? You do not, you do that. Do not, if she hasn't replied to your message, don't send her 10 more. Um, that's just fucking annoying, but you absolutely can send her those little messages. Like, I hope you have a great day checking in. How is she doing? Like things like phoning her and not just texting all the time. That's a really beautiful act. If you've gone that extra mile of phoning her for a chat, not just being like, Hey, how's your day? Like, great. Thanks for asking. Like that can get really dry sometimes. Like have some good conversation in there. Um, okay. I hope this has given you guys a little bit of a intro understanding about women and feminine and opening yourself up to more of that feminine and really being the portal for your woman to surrender deeper into her feminine energy. If you are wanting to work with me in 2020, uh, now is the time to let me know. Send us an email, send me an Instagram DM because spaces may already be full. Um, if not, there's probably like one space left. I haven't even checked how many I can take next year at the beginning of next year, but you definitely want to let me know ASAP. So even if it is for you, you can get on the list, um, because you don't want to miss out. So let me know if that seems like a good fit for you men, for any women listening, 
just keep an eye out on my Instagram if you're interested in any offerings or send me a DM of like what I have available if you're feeling the pull. Otherwise, have an amazing rest of your week or evening or morning or wherever the fuck you are. And as per usual, I would love for you to share this on Instagram or send me a DM sharing with me what your takeaways were because I always love reading them. Um, and like I said before, ladies, if you could leave a review, if you haven't already, it's a really amazing energy exchange. Um, like whilst yes, it helped people find me. It's actually like gives me the motivation and the drive and the desire, the desire to continue to do these podcasts because I know how much that you're appreciating them. And I really appreciate all of you that have taken the time to write a review. Like I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Have an incredible day and I'll talk to you soon. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you got lots of chicken nuggets out of today's episode. I would be really, really grateful if you'd be able to leave me a review and a star rating that you think is appropriate, hopefully five. And if you could share this podcast so that I can help more women live a life of flow and ease, I would be so fucking grateful. Make sure you tag me in it on Instagram so I can personally thank you because I know so many of my clients have found me literally because their friends have posted about my podcast on their Instagram story. And I just want to help as many women as possible. So by you sharing it, I would be so fucking grateful. And I'm sure your friends would be too. If you do want to work with me, please do check out my website for all those details. And of course, you can DM me on Instagram with any other questions. If you have any podcast things you want me to talk about, any ideas, any feedback, I am always open to it. And I always love hearing what you guys have to say. So please don't hesitate about that either. I will catch you on the flip side. Have an amazing day or night wherever you are.